<clears throat> okay, the last secondary structure we're going to focus on are the beta sheets, and we're going to look at two of these beta sheets, um, the parallel beta sheet, right, and the anti-parallel beta sheet. And again, these arise from uh, combinations of phi and psi that have low energy conformations, or, or predicted low energy conformations. Okay, so um, these are sheets. They're flat. They're not like helices at all. Um, but what we'll find is that they really solve some of the conformational problems that we would predict with regards to steric hindrance um, in a, a real effective manner, but an effective way that's very different than the alpha helix. So uh, these sheets are composed of amino acids. The anti-parallel beta sheet is more common than the parallel beta sheet. We'll talk about maybe why that is in class. But if we look, what makes this thing anti-parallel? Well, it's kind of like an anti-parallel DNA uh, double-stranded um, helix, is that one strand, in this case, is going from the N to the C terminus, and then the next strand is going from the N to the C terminus in the opposite direction. Okay, You might think that might be easier to do, right? If we've got a continuous... A chain of amino acids. Let's go from N over here to C. Well, how do we make the next chain? Well, we just go down here and we go N to C in this direction. That seems pretty straightforward. The parallel beta sheets, obviously these different chains in the sheet, are um, in the same direction. That's harder to conceive of, right? Let's start at the top here. Here we're going from the N to the C. Now how do we get to this next chain? Well, I have to somehow loop around somewhere over here and then come back to the start so I can go N to C in the same direction in a parallel fashion. Now both of these sheets have very common characteristics. The anti-parallel is a little cleaner and is able to do this um, a little lower energy and that's probably why it's more common. But again we see uh, hydrogen bonds um, binding together the different chains of a particular sheet. Those hydrogen bonds, like the alpha helix, are between the same atoms, right? The hydrogen on a nitrogen of the peptide bond and the oxygen from the carbonyl carbon uh, in a peptide bond. So again, we have hydrogen bonds that are not between R groups. They're between the fundamental atoms of the peptide chain. Um, now, what you can't see here is where the R groups are, right? We'll have to have a different picture to show how we're getting those away from each other to minimize steric strain. Um, these chains, uh, there's a lot of variation in how you make these sheets. Usually a chain is less than 15 amino acids and uh, a particular sheet can have 2 to 15 chains. These numbers in parentheses are about the average. So that, again, there's a lot of variation in how these sheets uh, are composed. So. Um, we'll look at some of these sheets in class and hopefully get better sense of what they look like. I've just got one pretty good picture of a, of a beta sheet here. This is an anti-parallel beta sheet. You can sort of tell as we follow this chain, it sort of wraps itself back around going the opposite direction for the next one. Um, and in this particular image, the R groups are, are painted purple. So while you can see this thing's a big flat sheet here, these R groups are again on the outside of the sheet. They're pointing um, not back inside to the peptide bond, they're sort of displayed on the outside of the sheet structure and that accomplishes some of the same things that we saw at the alpha helix. One, it gets them away from each other so they're not pointing at each other causing steric strain. And again, this beta sheet could be a very functional part of a protein. All the interesting chemistries that are in the R groups are sitting there for me to look at and bind to and um, undergo chemistry with. And so the functionality is, is really a, evident. It's easy to see. It's not buried on the interior. Um, the peptide bond in this case is blue and green where the hydrogens is silver and the boring part, the normal generic peptide chain, is buried on the inside of this sheet with R groups um, ready to go on the outside. 